Hello and welcome to episode number one of the Matt's Movie Reviews Saturday Conversation Show, a weekly interview series where I talk to entertainment media personalities and content creators about their work and love of movies. Today's guest is John Fallon, who for over 20 years has proven to be the ultimate renaissance man in movie entertainment as not only a content creator, but also as an actor, a writer, and a director. And you can actually check out John Slater's film, Malicious, available now on demand and digital. I have a review of Malicious on my website. I gave it a very positive review. It's a really terrific thriller, but one that has a strong, social conscious kind of heartbeat to it as well talks about really important issues um it's a movie that that i absolutely love and it's great to have its director and an old friend of mine mr john fallon john how are you i'm very good man i'm very good how you doing buddy i am doing well i'm here it's a nice beautiful uh sydney morning i got in tribute to our conversation i got my uh rocky three uh nice teacup here nice it's the actually Rocky Four, I should say, because that's Drago uh, getting yeah, the, it is Drago, yeah, there. yeah. So it's yeah. like a little kind of tribute to both movies, really. So cheers to you. Cheers. Mm. I just got water, so cheers. I got that too. I got that too. But um, it's really um great to be able to talk to you today. And I think the first thing I want to talk about because we haven't really had a conversation about it yet, besides like some kind of like the messages online. I want to talk about malicious because this is a film for me as someone who kind of like has been following uh your filmmaking journey it kind of came out i kind of came out of nowhere because i know you did shelter after shelter you produced a few things you acted in a few things um arrow in the head of course is always there um and i know that you're working on like your kind of like a passion project heretic and for mm-hmm. multiple reasons that kind of fall through it then came malicious um and to me i was like oh this is interesting because i didn't i didn't realize that uh, john had this in the fire is this something that came about during the pandemic? Is that something that we really kind of came up with this concept and worked on it? Because, um, yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting film. And uh, I love um, Kevin Donato. He has a terrific kind of really kind of masculine kind of like a, a performance in there as well. And I just want to just dive into just like how this kind of came about for you and what was the um, the uh, the onus to really kind of like um, put this thing together and then get it out there as soon as you did. Uh, very long story short. Um, Kevin and Tornado and I wanted to work together for a bit. So we were trying to find something, one location and, uh, something we could do, you know, low budget. And this was before the, the, uh, pandemic. So I sent them the first script I ever wrote the first script. So it was crap, but with a good concept. And, um, he took it, read it and got inspired from it and wrote 25 pages or 30 pages of malicious which was known as break misspelled uh at the time before distributor changed the title and then i got inspired by what he wrote and i wrote and then he wrote and then we wrote and then we just you know worked the draft together and that's how it came about but like you said before at that time um i was really involved in heretic and that was my was and is and will always be my passion project and that was, you know, making headway and it was, you know, a big budget movie. And uh, but then the pandemic kicked in and heretic due to the pandemic and the war in Armenia, where all of uh, a certain section of Armenia that was disputed. Um, well, the Christians lost to Islam, so all of our locations were gone. So it was a one, two of um the pandemic and the war. So that destroyed heretic. So then after that, you know, the pandemic, I don't know how it was your experience, but mine was basically prison mm, and, uh, in Canada. I was in Canada at, at the time. So during that process, uh, Kevin and I, what else you got to do, but develop a movie. So we went back to malicious and we hooked up with these German producers and started doing like, we we're going to shoot in Germany and started doing auditions with German talent, like really high end talent and uh, prepping for when the pandemic ends. And eventually the German producers uh, were not able to bring in the funding. So that collapsed. Um, and I wanted to say if the German actors that auditioned for us uh, 
and were so excited about the project that we had cast. Uh, sorry, <laughs> really sorry. You guys rock. It's just the way it went. Um, so after that, in complete honesty, Kevin and Tornado became the driving force in getting the film off the ground. Um, I was kind of going into it a little backwards because I was still very disappointed by Heretic crashing. And, you know, The Shelter, my first film as a director, was, you know, one guy in a house, you know, by a lake. And now Militia says four people in the house by a lake. And I felt like uh, that's, you know, it's not really what was. I wasn't passionate about it. I really wanted to do Heretic, basically. But as we move forward, you know, and, and you know, Kevin, Kevin kind of brought the pieces together. And then and Nick Bailey who plays William in the picture, came on board as a producer as well. And he brought some pieces and then I got energized. And by the time I got to set, I was, I was on fire. So and it's a came. movie. It's a movie to me that is a film that's on fire. Cause as I said before, I don't want to give away too much because there is kind of twists in the story, really good mm-hmm. ones too. Ones I didn't see coming whatsoever. Um, so for everyone out there watching, I really recommend you check out Malicious. It's available now on demand from the um, usual places you can get at YouTube, Amazon, I'm pretty sure, um, Google Play. Right iTunes. As well. yeah. all, all those places. I really recommend people, if you want to check out like a really good kind of like uh, thriller with these really kind of like strong, dramatic and masculine performance at the, at the front of it by Kevin, um, in a movie that really keeps you on edge, not only uh, tone wise, but also script wise. I thought the script in the film was like really clever and really well done, especially as all these things kind of start to, you know, come together at the end. Like I said, don't want to give away too much. Um, yeah. I really recommend people do check out Malicious because it is, a, it's, it's one, in my opinion, one of my favorite thrillers of 2023. Um, Thank you. I want to go back, John. Let's go back to the year, the year 2000, when things are so much more simpler, I feel, anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and when the inception of Arrow in the Head, it's really interesting. Um, at that time, from what I understand, you were doing kind of like um, uh, script doctoring, acting, etc. Um, some things didn't work out. You found yourself working in a video store, from from what I from what I did my research in, and yeah, then all of a sudden you research. get this, this get this offer from um, uh, um, Burge from Joe Blow, and he's like, mm-hmm. "Hey, I want to put together this horror section. Um, is it something that you're interested in?" Um, and you were like, yep, I want to do it my way. And thus, Arrow in the Head was born, and the Arrow himself is speaking to us right now. Um, yeah. um, so back then in 2000, for the people who don't know, um, what was the online space like that time? Because today, it just seems like this vast sea of websites and social media and such. But back then, I imagine it was a very kind of sparse kind of place, wasn't it? It wasn't really something like people were online but it wasn't like it was something that consumed our lives all the time, was it? Yeah, no. It, well, there was no social media, so that's number one. And also, um, it wasn't as corporate as it is now. So now, you know, everything is corporate. When Burge started Joe Blow in 1998, and then I, I came on board uh, in 2000 for Arrow in the Head, it was the Wild West. Uh, I remember going as the Arrow to uh trying to get into critic screening like you know those you know so you have you know uh print critics you know renowned critics they go to screenings they see the movie in advance and we were trying to get in and they're like you're not real you're not real you're just the internet the internet's bullshit no no you can't get in so they wouldn't let us in so at at first you know we really um had to fight against uh the current to move forward because at that time they didn't take online critics or reviewers or whatever you want to call it seriously so but then with arrow in the head i i started it as a goof i really didn't think anything by it i didn't think it would be such a big part of my life uh you know i was inspired and i grew up with uh stand-up comedians like sam kinnison andrew dice clay eddie murphy and when burge approached me howard stern as well uh, I'm like, I want to do that kind of like, I'm not a reviewer. I'm not a critic. I'm not a journalist. I never took like a second of journalism class in my life, but I knew I was a good writer and I have personality. So in my reviews, I really went out of my way to talk to people and also just try to be funny and often enough, very out of line, especially by today's, mm, I'm going to 
watch my words, by today's uh, very uh, overtly politically correct standards. Very, very so, sensitive standards. Well, it goes beyond sensitive at this point. It's ridiculous, but it that's is, another yes. conversation, I guess, right? Um, so, yeah, and it, and, it, and it blew up. Like within three, four months, I, I had something new and and the, a new career path, if you will. It's really interesting how you kind of already knew what type of direction you're riding and you're kind of like your, I guess you could call it an online personality one to go because I think the thing with a lot of people who write, especially when it comes to writing, say, uh, online content or film reviews or whatever, it takes a little bit of time. You're just going to get used to finding your voice, finding your tone, finding the way that you want to attack films. Um, does, does the fact that you had kind of like almost made like this, you know, I wouldn't call it like a alternate personality in the arrow, but kind of like an online personality in the arrow, and you knew exactly who your influences were. Does it make it easier for you to tackle your uh, reviews writing wise as well? Did you find that the arrow was taking over John Fallon and just writing his own kind of huh. things there? No, no, because at first the arrow was John Fallon and vice versa. I, I wasn't playing a role, I was literally being myself, maybe being myself, a, a version of myself. That's a bit more extreme, but, uh, you know, I was being myself because I, by nature, you know, I'm, I like making jokes and I personally like politically incorrect humor. Uh, so I was just being myself. But then, you know, I was I was fairly young. That's like 23 years ago. Mm -hmm. So then as time went on, I evolved and I grew up. And that's only like I I can't remember like how much time it took, but at a certain point I was older, but I was still playing. Then I started to play a part because at first I didn't play a part. That was me. But then I grew up and I became more mature, but I didn't want to change the style, so right. I, I I kept to it. So I fronted a little bit like later on, yeah. Um, when it came to those early days of the internet when it comes to pop culture especially movie culture what was the communities like online because now we got social media but back then the whole big thing was message boards right people getting message boards mm -hmm. and they talk then that's where people pretty much talk their shit and, and everything else and yeah. let out their frustrations um what was that like for you kind of diving into that well was that something that you kind of like were uh, abreast of as well as kind of like the, the founder of our in the head that you know there's a community of people out there like-minded people as well who not only reading your content but they're talking about movies as well did you ever dive into the whole kind of message board uh kind of world back then and kind of like debate with other people or did you find that place to be just a little too a little too intense to kind of backed off a little bit there because it because what i remember back then things used to get like really intense with the fandom people can let out their frustrations now on Twitter and such but the message boards that's where people let mm -hmm. out their, all of their kind of like their frustrations and their energies and such um I, 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 by nature, I'm a person that does, surprisingly enough, does not like technology. Uh, I hate technology. I think the more technology advances, the more humanity regresses. I'm the guy that doesn't want a, you know, automatic window on his car. I want to roll it down. Hmm. You know, uh, I, I like to do things myself. I don't want technology to do it for myself. So when message boards came about, I didn't join any message boards uh, like, you know, on other websites, but I did have to partake in our own on, on Joe Blow and, and Air on the Head because that was part of the gig. And I went into it, uh, yeah, not too enthusiastic. And the same thing with social media. Like now, of course, social media is intricate to, to all our lives. But when Facebook came out and then Twitter came out and all that stuff, I didn't want to join, you know, but I had to because... The job, you know, came with that. You have to, you had to you had to keep up with the times. So I guess at heart I'm a bit of an old foggy, you know. Uh, I have an old, an old soul in that respect. Where I really, if it was up to me right now, no Facebook, no Twitter, no phone. I hate all that shit. Uh, put me in the mountains with with my dog and you know and my family. I'm a happy man. So uh, so no, I didn't <laughs> to to uh, answer your question. Uh, no, I didn't really go into message boards. I, I do have one funny message board story. Uh, at a certain point, Internet Move Database had message boards. Mm -hmm. And um, and I guess, you know, I started to be, 
I don't like the word, but internet kind of known. I won't even use the word famous, you see, known. And at some point, there was a three-page thread on Internet Moon Database under my name debating my sexuality. You know, is he gay? He's gay. Oh, he's gay. Oh, he's bi or all this stuff, you know, and uh, or, you know, he's an asshole. He should die, you know, and I would get emails like that too. you know, people loving me, but also people, uh, you know, to kill yourself. You suck. All the crap, you know, the usual crap. Right. And it was, you know, I wasn't used to that. So I wake up in the morning, I read this stuff about me and I'm, and it was hurting my feelings. And at a certain point I was at the saw, I think it was a saw party. And I was talking with uh, James Wan, who's from Australia, uh, your, your, your yes, uh, homeland. And I told him about it and he said, and I always remember it. He said, dude, don't complain. People are taking time, time out of their day to talk about you. That's good. That means you're doing something right. Even if it's negative. So I always remember that. So I kind of changed my mindset on that. With that said, I then stopped reading like stuff about me, message boards about me. Although the hate mail kept coming, but that was fine because, you know, everything happens for a reason. By the time I put out The Shelter, my first film, which is was something that nobody expected, which is a very spiritual and it's almost like the Book of Job on steroids. Mm. You know, I got mostly actually positive reviews from critics but i got some negative ones and pretty personal and scathing reviews but because i was so used to hate from the air on the head days it, it just rolls off my back and that continues to this day you know i mean i mean malicious hasn't been reviewed much unfortunately and there's a couple of reviews that are like you know middle ground but it, it just doesn't do anything to me so uh it calloused calloused me so that that for me is a positive so going to my next question and i think i assume what the answer is what's your opinion on what social media has done not only to the internet landscape but to the movie pop culture landscape do you think it's enhanced it do you think it's created a, a better uh, opportunity for people to get together or do you think it's done the opposite do you think it's created a more kind of destructive influence in regards to how people consume and talk movies That's 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 a tough one. That's a tough one. I mean, look, it's given everybody a platform. So like yourself, you know, you have, you know, Matt's movie reviews and, you know, because of Facebook, because of I'm assuming you're on Twitter, um, you get a wider audience. More people know about you than if you didn't have that YouTube as well. YouTube, you know, YouTube, I'm, I saw your channel. You're starting to get discovered, which is great. And congrats. Mm -hmm. So. There's a benefit to that, definitely. It's really hard for me to stick about movies. So in terms of that particular question, because I'm just going to go back to this. Uh, the internet gave everybody a voice, but a lot of voices don't deserve to be heard, in my useless mm. opinion, obviously. Mm. If, for me, if I spend more than five seconds on Twitter, I, I am completely discouraged about the state of our society and, and it, it depresses the shit on me. So I actually deleted my Twitter because of that. Um, so I, I think life was better before social media where people interacted more in person, um, where people didn't hide behind a keyboard to, to, you know, insult or, or uh, spew hate. And also obviously I see people, personally a lot of division just social division whether it be a uh, politics uh at this point gender for some reason uh it's just negativity it, it, it's almost like social media is from my perspective augmenting negativity everybody's too busy to type and pointing fingers at other people as opposed to pointing the finger on themselves and making their lives better so I think social media is shit. Yeah. I think the, the the whole thing about social media, my thing is that absolutely, yes, it's it's great that people like myself, content creators, like when I started uh, Matt's Movie Reviews, that was back in 2006. So it's kind of right around the time of the inception of um, uh, Facebook and, and such and all the other, everything else that came out from after that. So it's been a great opportunity for me, especially at the time with um, 
because at, at that time I was writing for like print publications and stuff and that stuff was kind of like that industry was kind of collapsing um like a lot of magazines I used to write for a lot of them aren't around anymore or they transition fully to online now so it's given me the opportunity to really you know reach out to people and, and with my content with my writing and such but on the other end as you said it's it's a it's an odd thing where these things are supposed to bring communities together it's actually create a tribes and these tribes are just attacking each other all the time online to me it's just really kind of kind of sad more than anything else because i don't think that was the the um what people hoped the, the whole social media experience uh, experience would be but it turns out that's just the reality of the situation i guess i think social media more than anything else is kind of like highlighted what humanity is just sometimes at its worst kind of like um uh worst kind of craven kind of like instinctual kind of beings which is really sad for me to say because myself as a, as a christian and i know you're a christian as well we'd like to think that there's goodness in everyone but unfortunately there's also that other side that kind of creeps in more than ever, ever and Social media loves to bring the ego any more than anything else, and pride more than anything else to the fore. And and I just hope people just can just learn to just chill out a little bit when it comes to those two kind of avenues. There, um, I want to I um, move on now to a, a game I like to play, and uh, just to change things up here. So we're going to play this game, John. It's called Choose Between Two. So I'm going to give you uh, okay. two things to choose from. Real simple. Um, but I'm gonna. This is kind of more tailored to to you. What I think you are as a in your taste as a, as a movie uh, movie uh, man, movie lover, film fan. Because I think you and I have a lot of the same tastes, a lot of things. So, John, are you ready to play? Choose between mm -hmm. two. Yeah, shoot. All right. I'm gonna throw out a, a humdinger to you first off. You ready? Stallone yep. or Schwarzenegger? Stallone. It's pretty easy, actually. I always go Stallone as well. Uh, I, yeah. I, I, something about Stallone, even as a, um, uh, I know a lot of people look at Schwarzenegger as kind of like this, um, kind of like inspiring um, personality, and he very much is. But so, so Stallone, his story is just, just, just as remarkable, <clears throat> if not, if not more. Um, especially as a creator and a writer and a director as such. Um, there's a thing well, he was my, he was like my father figure, Stallone. So my, you know, my 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 dad was fairly absent. And Stallone was, you know, the role model that I looked up to as a man. So, I, you know, in terms of his films, in terms of where he came from, in terms of how he battled adversities to get where he is, in terms of achievements. So, you know, Stallone writes, directs, acts, produces, and, you know, I've done the same thing on a much minute level, obviously. Uh, but, you know, Stallone was and still is, uh, you know. A, a person that uh, I, I've always looked up to and probably always will. You and I are pretty much the same. Stallone to me is the man for me. I grew up watching the Rocky films, the Rambo films, just anything Stallone, even to this day, anything that comes out with his name's attached to a good or bad, yeah. I watch it. You know, I can't help yeah, it. It's me. just like a, I'm just, it's like instinct. I kind of jump towards it, you know? Um, and so yeah. great to see him getting his flowers uh, so much later in his career. That documentary that was on doc, um, Netflix was actually pretty good. I, yeah. I rather liked it. So um, sticking to the Stallone thing, Rocky or Rambo? Oh, that's rough, dude. Um, mm. oh, you're an asshole. I can't. I can't choose. Sorry. Two. Look, if there's one movie, you know they. <laughs> that question, you know, if there's one movie you could bring to a deserted art movie, it just makes me incredibly happy. So I'll go Rambo. Yeah. Rambo. Yeah. Um, Wes Craven or John Carpenter? And you're you're really going rough on me, yeah. Uh, probably John Carpenter. Love John Carpenter. I've been watching a lot of his older stuff again lately. Um, Prince of Darkness, such an oh, underrated film. Amazing, amazing. Um, film. In the Mouth of Madness, just another yeah, another great name. film he did there. Oh, just so many great movies. Um, okay, you'll go to when it comes to the cinema. You sit down. Are you munching on popcorn or candy? Popcorn. I hate candy. Popcorn. Oh really? Not 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 a sweet tooth. Okay. No. Um, streaming or physical media? Yeah, that's an easy one. Physical media. It's interesting. I was talking to someone last night about this, and it's pretty great how physical media seems to. I, I think I personally believe in around a year or two, physical media is going to be 
in the same wheelhouse as vinyl. I think a lot of people are going to be going back to it. Um, and for two reasons. Number one, there's too much option for streaming. There's so many different things, streaming services going on. You can't get all of them. Um, and number two, I think people are wary now that uh, while streaming is cool, the library that you ha have access to, those titles there, they're not going to be there forever. And a lot of times things shift yeah. and change as such. And uh, I, know, I don't know about you, John, but when I look at my my Blu-ray DVD collection, I'm just like, ah, I own this. I can watch this whenever I want, you know? Yep. Yep. And that's useful because I don't know if you're like me. Uh, I tend to watch old, older, more older movies, movies I've seen before, yeah. more than new stuff because I really don't care about that much of the new stuff. And last one, I watch Cobra before I watch Marvels, you know, whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I watch, I watch Demolition Man before any of that stuff too. Yeah. That, that to me, those are my superhero movies. You know, that was me. That was the larger than life characters and actors, and their muscles were real and went padded as well. Exactly. Um, last one. Acting or directing? At this point, I would say directing because I, I find the most uh, fulfillment from it. It's the ultimate uh, creative expression. You know, you're uh, even though and it's also the ultimate team sport because a director is only as good as the people around him. So. I love working with talented people. Uh, I love leading. I love that obstacles come in my way and I have to resolve them. I love that challenge. So directing as a whole is definitely way more fulfilling. With that said, acting is to me like a vacation now. So directing, fulfilling, creatively, like a million percent. Acting, you show up, know your lines, hit your mark. Do your scene, get paid. The, it's quite simple. So I like the simplicity of acting. I, I did a, a Western, or actually two Westerns as an actor playing the same role. Um, Gunfight at Rio Bravo. And the next one is called Taken uh, from Rio Bravo is coming out next year. And I'm dressed like a cowboy. And I'm on a cowboy set. And you're just happy for me. I'm I'm just happy. This is a vacation. I, I'll take this over going by beach any day. So, mm -hmm. uh, but to answer your question the, in, in an incredibly long winded uh, way, uh, yeah, directing. I want to talk about something else now that you're so good at, which is writing, because you've done writing in so many different facets. I'm curious, John, what's your writing process like for myself? I don't know what it is, but I like to write by my drafts by hand first. I don't know. I just like pen and paper. It's just like the, the old school guy in me. And then later I'll go and type it up and, and edit and such. What about yourself? How do you like to, to write? Do you listen to music? Do you have a certain way do you like to go about it? How do you, what's your process like? Uh, in complete honesty, uh, I think malicious malicious and heretic, which I had to rewrite and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite. Um, are the last things that I wrote, and I've kind of lost uh, the thunder for it. I kind of lost the thunder for the writing process. Maybe because you know I have five scripts in in a drawer that have yet to be sold. Maybe because you know on when I was the arrow for arrow on the head, I was writing pretty much every day, nonstop for like you know twenty years or something. Um, so I haven't went back to that you know but for a while maybe you know god willing i will someday we'll find that fire well right now i'm more concerned with paying the bills and hmm. and you know and and surviving this insane uh world that we live in but at the time uh when i was really uh, on fire when it came to writing uh it was always the same thing uh you know first of all shut the lights candles I'd often put a candle of Christ, you know, that always inspires me. Uh, whatever I was writing, I would find a film score that fits that mode, uh, fits the vibe of what I'm writing. If I'm writing an action movie, then maybe it's, you know, the Com uh, Com not Commando uh, Predator score or mm -hmm. the Rambo 2 score by Goldsmith. If I'm writing, you know, Heretic, for example, it was a lot of um, Gregorian, Gregorian chants and stuff like that. 
And I'd usually have a drink like uh, Jack Daniel on ice or something like that. Not the whole bottle because then you're writing a scrap, but just one, one or two drinks just to loosen up a little bit, get the juices flowing. So it was actually, I really enjoyed the process of writing. There was a beauty about it, you know, the candle, the drink, the music, darkness. It's just you creating a world that I really enjoyed it. But in complete honesty, the film industry just beat the sh the love out of me. They beat the love of writing out of me. Just the, uh, yeah, I guess the simplest way I could put it. Is that it comes down to just like the, is it, was it just a case of just like constant rejection or like not, them not looking at your scripts, these things that you really put your heart and soul into, then they're just not seeing what you're seeing as well? Because like I can really understand that when it comes to myself being a freelance writer, sometimes after a while, I just really got just really disillusioned about what I was writing. And, and it turned out the problem was I was writing for them and I wasn't writing for me. And my favorite piece mm. I was writing for was I was writing the films, the things that I wanted to do in my way. Where when I was writing for other people, I, I found myself writing the, the, how they wanted to do it. And whenever I wanted to pitch something that's more kind of towards my kind of like angle of things, they always just kind of reject it after a while. You, you, you can take it to a point where you're just like, well, fuck it. You know, why do I bother even trying to, you know, pitch this stuff in the first place? And I imagine that's something that maybe you're at uh, right now in regards to your writing as well. It's more having to do with, you know, I've been hired to write you know, writing for other people, which is fine. I get paid, I write, and that's fine. And if today somebody comes up to me, hey, John, here's X and X amount of money. I want you to write me uh, an action script with, uh, you know, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, I'll do it. That's fine. Uh, it's more that you write a script. Man, well, what's happened to me is that you write a script and then you try to get it off the ground. Uh, most of the scripts that I've written is either uh, to 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 result into productions that either I was going to produce or either I was going to direct. So like let's take Heretic for example. So I wrote the script with uh, Karim uh, Sherigan, and then it took two three years to get it to the finish line. And throughout these two three years is just an obstacle course and an obstacle course and dealing with egos dealing with liars dealing with bullshit um yeah i could tell you stories they'll make you cry and then you get to the finish line and then it crumble everything crumbles so three years of non-stop work to make this happen down the drain all right start over john so i've always written for the most part i've written for myself Meaning I've I've been hired to write, but for the most part, I've written for projects that I want to do. And and then usually I take the lead or I, I bring in people like with, with, with Malicious, you know, Kevin actually took the lead on that one. And then we get it off the ground. So for me, like I said, it's more the the amount of bullshit and lies and betrayals and ego driven people that are in the film industry is absolutely freaking ridiculous and that is what killed my my love of writing because if i write if i write something else right now another script either i could sell it which is very hard to sell and then call it a day or i'll try to get it off the ground and getting it off the ground is 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 you know is a war is a war so you really for me now where i'm at uh if I'm going to get something off the ground, if I'm going to lead, I really, really, really have to be incredibly passionate about it because I know what's coming. And uh, and right now, in terms of all the scripts I have in the drawer, Heretic is the only one I, I would go to war for. When it comes to the other side of the, the business, uh, the film of business of like entertainment in regards to Arrow in the Head, when, you're, when you look back and you start writing Aaron ahead, you, you put it up there. It's part of Joe Blow Network. You're becoming internet known, as you said. Yeah. When did you realize that what you were doing? When? Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is, when did you know that what you were doing wasn't only something that you know you can write about your know, films and and share your love of horror and such, but when did it become? When did you realize that? Hey this is a business as well. And yeah, I had to try to change your mindset into looking at Aaron ahead as a business. Was that something that was there for even from the beginning that look, we're going to get 
I mean, back then, I mean, I don't know what was available in regards to ads or sponsors or what have you, but I'm sure there had to come a part, a time where you you had that internet known um, uh, personality with that arrow. You had people looking at your content. They were talking about your stuff. They were definitely coming to the website. So if people are checking your stuff out, there should be some type of revenue coming from that, right? So when did you realize, hey, I'm I'm as much a businessman as a writer, and I'm going to have to approach it that way as well? When did that when was that kind of moment for you? At first, like really, I really didn't think anybody outside of my mom would read what I was writing, you know. So, uh, so it was not a business for me at all. And and in terms of financials, it did take a while for it to kick in. When I realized that I had to somewhat adjust the way I was going about it, is when I realized that oh, people are reading it, and oh, filmmakers are reading it, hmm. and you know, I was pretty rough, you know, I would like insult people. You know, in the name of entertainment and humor, but it would still insult people. Because I really didn't think anybody cared what I have to say. Uh, but then when I started getting a couple of emails here and there from directors or screenwriters or saying, hey, hey man, you know, uh, that's not nice for you to say that, you know, or hey, man. I, had, I always remember there's one screenwriter. And this was like a couple of years back. I was invited to a party in Hollywood. And it was this guy. And then he, when he found out, I was invited by like a, a friend of a friend. And when he found out I was coming, he was like, that's fucking the arrow. No, he's not coming to my party. Oh, wow. I'm like, I'm like, why not? Because a bazillion years ago, I had written a review of a movie he had written. And I basically said, I don't remember uh, exactly what I said, but something along the lines that, you know, he wrote, did he write the script on the toilet? I mean, this, you know, this was garbage, blah, blah, blah. You know, so I, I was really rough. And, uh, yeah, he took it to heart and, you know, that hurt his feelings and, and I get it. So I did have to adjust to not go too personal on people. Uh, even though it was in the name of entertainment, it wasn't me trying to be uh, mean or cruel. It was just me making jokes, you know, but the script did suck, you know, that's, I will say that, but, uh, so, yeah, so that was one of the big adjustments uh, I had to make. And then as time went on and society changed, and I, I kind of, you know, I retired from uh, writing reviews on Air on the Head, I think it was 2016 or 17, mm -hmm. uh, right before we had this whole, like, huge shift in um, our culture, basically, our society, like, in, in terms of being overtly politically correct and incredibly... Yeah triggered and sensitive and all that crap there's no way what i did 20 years ago would fly today i'd be canceled in five minutes <laughs> in my opinion yeah so i um, booked out at the right when it came to what's interesting for me i like when you're saying that time by 2016 2017 especially i think a couple a few years after that with the pandemic as well i think people were online more than ever and something that was becoming really popular. It's not to say it wasn't already, but like it was just even huge, like even bigger than before, was people going to places like YouTube, Instagram, uh, things like that, where video content just became as important as written content. I think these days sure. video content is even more, um, yeah, I agree. Uh, more, more read than written content. And I'm not kind of like, I try to have my 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 hands in different pies. I have my written stuff. I do that. I do my podcast stuff like now, but I'm doing way more uh, video stuff than I ever done before as well. We're going to have this sort of conversation series started. I'm working on long form stuff. I'm doing more video reviews. What's your approach to that as a kind of like as a guy behind Aaron Head in regards to video content? Because I know I, I follow Aaron Head on YouTube and I see that you have like um, lots of... Um, uh, you, you have people talking about like um, older horror films. It's like sometimes there's there was the Arrow in the Head show where you and Lance would like to debate kind of like topics there. Um, yeah. And then you have the Joe Blow horror originals, which I'm proud to say that I've contributed to uh, several of those as well. Yeah. Um, which I've got to say, those are incredibly fun to write. And that's and writing those things really inspired me to say, you know, what I think, you know, I love to do this stuff for my own my own show as well because it's nothing better to me than diving into the stuff, writing the script, then narrating it and editing it and doing all that stuff. It, to me, it's like I'm almost kind of like it's going to sound kind of weird. Um, it almost feels like there's a uh, initial creative juices and energy that I had back when I first started writing, like 17, 18 years ago. It kind of that feeling comes again because 
I'm talking about the same stuff, but I'm doing it in a different way. And I think it's really kind of fascinating yeah. how it kind of works. Yeah, are you kind of like in the same kind of uh, headspace there? Not really, because I'm not. Well, I am a creative to some degree, but I, I basically oversee. So I have a great staff, you know, like Lance Velchek and Mike Conway, uh, Tyler Nichols, uh, Andrew Hatfield. I'm not going to name all of them, guys. So don't get offended if I didn't mention you. Um, I have a great staff and they're they're they are the creative on Joe Blow Horror ori Originals. Yeah. And I just oversee and guide and stuff like that. So for me, it's more of a business position. But I'm, I'm very proud of what we we've achieved. And, you know, we, we have a series called 80s Horror Memories. That was the brainchild mm -hmm. of Burge Garabini and myself. And we prepped it like for months and months before we started creating it. I'm incredibly proud of that. And I'm hoping to do and, you know, produce more series like that. Um, the Air on the Head show was a blast. I, I miss it already. We got we got canned because at the end of the day, it was a financial thing, uh, you know, that there was not enough money back. You know, we're spending more money than making. That's why we had to can it. But that was unfortunate because I really enjoyed that sitting down with Lance and talking movies. It was, it made my weeks better on a personal level. Um, but I am thinking of getting into the space as a creator myself, but it wouldn't be about movies. It would be about faith. Hmm. So um, I love movies. Don't get me wrong, but I think, that right now what's really uh, ch uh, charging me creatively is, is faith. And uh, so that's something I've been starting to think about, but and you know, speaking, still, yeah, go ahead. I and mean, speaking of which, I don't know about you, but uh, as a, as a fellow Catholic, I, I'm all in on, on following a lot of people like on YouTube, like a lot of Catholic channels, like, um, Pints with Aquinas and um, a bunch of other ones as well. Like there's some really great things out there, and, and I think it'd be fascinating to see what your takes on a lot of this stuff up because it'll be, it'll be interesting, interesting to see for sure. Yeah, I feel I feel I have something to say. I, I really feel I have something to say, especially me. I mean, I've been a, uh, you know, well, we're all sinners, as you know, you know, but uh, you know, I've been through a really, really eventful life, and my faith is very connected to everything that I went through. And I'm not saying I'm going to do a biography online, but I'm still marinating on it as to how I, I would go about it. Um, but you know, we still have Joe Blow Horror Originals, '80s Horror Memories. Check out that series; it's awesome. Yes. If you love the '80s, we love horror in the '80s. We have Joe Blow Originals, which is more mainstream films, and of course, we have all our trailers and clips channels and stuff like that and Burge and I are trying to find something new something more outside the box um to do so we'll see so but I look forward to to if I'm not creating I'm dead inside you know inside mm. so I do need to create right now I'm not creating the last thing I created was malicious right now I'm not creating I'm more like a manager I'm overseeing stuff so I need to find you know something that motivates me to want to create and i think faith will be it i want to go to uh, another game now so this is going to be rapid fire questions so i'm going to throw some questions your way i want you to try to give me your answer as quick as you can and these okay. aren't going to be easy I'm just let me know right now so i'm going to throw okay. some things your way something silly something serious but here we go first off scariest moment you remember from a film Uh, yeah, the original Evil Dead, uh, when the girl in the cellar oh, pops up, pops up, yeah. and starts talking. Yeah, that's a that's a great one. Um, a director or actor you would love to work with? Sylvester Stallone. Of course. Pizza, uh, pineapple on pizza? Yes or no? Yes. Ah, you're a pineapple guy. I'm not a pineapple guy. I want to put that out there right now. I, I like it on pizza. Mind. Yeah. I'm not associated with this man to the pineapple pizza community. I'm just putting it out there right now in case it, <laughs> it goes in the algorithm. Um, greatest actor of all time? Marlon Brando. That's a good one. I think people really forget about Brando. To me, you know what Brando kind of reminds me of? I'm a big um, basketball fan. Brando kind of reminds me of Wilt Chamberlain in that he's this guy that came yeah, out and that. then, and like he just 
dominated the game, but when people talk about the history of the game, his name for some reason gets lost in the shuffle because all everyone else could, came came after him. Um, and to this day, I think a lot of the actors that are around are still kind of like just motivated and influenced by the, the Brando, the Brando, what he did. He just he changed the game. I, I love love Brando. I agree. Um, I agree. Greatest director. Martin Scorsese. Mine too. He's mine too. I think. Or Clint Eastwood. I mean, Clint Eastwood as well. Yeah, that's tough. Clint, Clint's still uh, going strong as well. Ninety something yeah. years old, still directing. I mean, yeah. it's kind of incredible to me the the body of work he's put together as a as a filmmaker. I mean, I think he does a film every couple of years now. Fantastic. Um, last one. A legend, living or dead, you will love to share a drink with. Burt Reynolds. Nice. Again, another one of those guys I think has been kind of uh, lost in the sands of time. I've, I'm hoping that there's a kind of there'll be a Burt uh, Reynolds renaissance sometime in the future. I think people need to get back into his films. What was that one um, where he plays the, the stuntman? Was that Hopper? Uh, played the stuntman? He had that Trans Am with the big um, flaming bird. I don't know. I forgot yeah, what it's called. Yeah, or Topper. It was, yeah. Topper. Hopper. I forgot Hooper, what it was. Hooper. Anyway, I'm, Hooper. Yeah. I love that film. That was a great film. Yeah. And Deliverance as well and so many other ones. Yeah. Um, final question here. So we talked about what you're doing now in regards as a, as a filmmaker, and director, what, how things were in the past. I'm really curious, though, what do you see as the, industry, the, the film industry looking like in the future? Do you think that, like, in my opinion, I think what's going to happen is I think we're going to see kind of like a embrace of the older stuff coming back again. We talked before about how physical media, I think that's going to come back. I'm thinking, and I'm kind of hoping as well that maybe post COVID when we were shut out of like cinemas, that people would embrace the cinema experience again, and not only for the superhero movie, but for indie films as well. That's what I'm kind of hoping for. Am I being too optimistic there? Or, do you, or, do you, or, or what What do you see as kind of like the, the future of, uh, of, of film and cinema? Um, with all the experience you had, uh, how, what's your projection? Uh, I think you're being too optimistic. Mm. Um, you know, your generation, my generation, we were bred on certain types of movies. We were challenged. Uh, you know, I went like a movie like Pulp Fiction wouldn't be a smash hit today if released, you know. So I think there's a. I think we're the new generation is being dumbed down. It's being dumbed down through social media, through through TikTok, through and through films as well. And what is it's just my opinion, by the way. I don't want to offend anybody, but what is stupid, what is easier is what is being pushed. It's easier to scroll through these reels on TikTok or Instagram than read the Bible. It's easier to eat a cheeseburger or pizza than eat, you know, a, a proper meal. It's easier to watch, I don't know, any day fiance generation is really being pushed what's easier. It's easier to watch Spider-Man than the latest Scorsese movie. Mm. So I think this latest generation is being pushed junk, junk, junk on pretty much every level, and they're embracing it. So I don't see independent coming back on the big screen. I don't see the film industry really changing their format. Uh, I see everything kind of going in a worse direction, more streaming, less uh, challenging theatrical releases. Uh, although Marvel is kind of like they they pumped out so many fucking superhero movies, they're starting to die to dry out. So hopefully, I'll give, give them you know some other thing that's going to come in that's stupid and easy. And uh, so yeah, no, I don't I don't think it's going in the right direction. But I'll always have my Blu-ray DVD collection, so I'm good. Absolutely, physical media all the way. Exactly. Yeah. I'm what I'm hoping is that voices like ours who've remembered the good old days where you know cinema was king and, and when the whole physical media thing started just how great that was as well and how fresh and new it was what i'm hoping is that we can be sort of like the reminders 
um, the gatekeepers in a sort of way and kind of remind people, hey, this is how big is where I've, I'm, and hopefully we can bring it back to how it was again. Because it's one thing, you know, if if there's one space of the online sphere where, where people, uh, especially the younger generation, are being dumbed down, hopefully we can bring a different space and make it richer and better and, and try to try to make almost, you know, you know, kind of like a spiritual context, make converts out of these uh, these wandering young'uns. I think we need a, we need more shepherds and less sheep. That's my hope anyway. Yeah, in, 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 I like that. In, that's a good way to look at it, yeah. And John Fallon, in my opinion, you're one of those one of those great shepherds out there. Ever since the days of Arrow in the Head, continue up to now with everything you're doing with Joe Blow and and everything you're doing with your filmmaking as well. I think you're you're a vital voice and always have been. And um, it's been a pleasure to have you on today. You've been on my my podcast before, but to to kick off this Saturday conversation series with you, John, has been a, a, a absolute pleasure of mine. And and I'm I'm so honoured and in touch that you said yes and you agree to be on here because I think this is exactly what I want this series to be and um, uh, your experience and your, in your wisdom and, and just the, you know, the, the frankness of the discussion is exactly what I was looking for. So I thank you so very much, John Fallon. And you can you tell all the people out there where they can find your stuff online so they can follow you and, um, and get to know you a little more. Yeah. I'm on Facebook, official John Fallon, Instagram, official John Fallon. You could follow the arrow on the head, Twitter, arrow on the head on Twitter. And of course, please visit, Joe Blow Horror Originals. Visit Joe Blow Originals, and uh, yeah, let's let's start with that. And uh, I'll see you all online. And everyone, watch Malicious. Go oh, on, yes, go now. That too. Watch Malicious, and also find uh, the Shelter, which is a movie that John made back in 2014. Um, uh, Michael Parry is in it. Great film. It's the first time I think you and I spoke. Well, I was on the press for for that as well. Um, what a way back yeah. then. So. Yeah. To yep. check out the shelter and also check out malicious and john fallon thank you very much take care and uh yeah talk to you soon thank you very much god bless you thank you for watching the matt's movie reviews channel please subscribe for more reviews podcast interviews and exclusive content also if you would like to request a review and support my work please join my patreon via the link in the description below